Um, England struggled against the Swiss. Our under twenty one record in, in you know in the Euros in the World Cup is absolutely abysmal. I watched the game. England dominated in terms of possession, really, but didn't really have a, a sniff. Didn't create too much. It was a bit of a snooze fest. The Swiss, in my opinion always looked the team that were more likely to score. Uh, and in the end, they got a bit of luck. It was almost a two-footed finish, wasn't it? Um, but England lose again. And, and with that squad, they're, they're underperforming. And, and AD Boothroy is, is under pressure, James. Yeah, massively. You know, this is potentially, you know, into the next golden generation. You know, you look at that team and that team's fully capable of playing week in, week out in the Premier League and probably, you know, surviving relegation as well. And so it's just, it's disappointing to see such a, talented generation of lads just not whether they're not being coached correctly managed correctly it's just it's, they're boring to watch and that shouldn't be the way you know when we're playing potentially you know five at the back having Davis and Oliver Skip play in the same role you need some flair in that midfield and you know it's brilliant having Hudson Adoy and Aketia and Smith throw as a front three but if you've got no one feeding the balls to them then it's an absolute waste because Nketiah is brilliant at holding up play and you have those runners in Smith Rowe and Adoy, but you need a Curtis Jones or an Eze in that team. Otherwise, it's not going to come to anything. And we saw exactly what happened. Well, it, it was an interesting one, wasn't it? Because they, they set up in that 3 4 3, um, you know, with, with inside forwards. Um, there's very recognised recognizable players not only in, in the starting 11 for England but but on the bench too they have a, a lot of choice uh, AD Boothroyd but Elliot they, they look like a side that didn't know the system didn't know what the manager wanted from them and and just that they lacked ideas yeah I think that's it they lacked creativity they didn't look like creating anything really um, the first half you've seen the, the compact shape of the Swiss players and they couldn't they couldn't break it down and if they did it was from a corner or something and then it was a headed like headed over the bar that I just I can't see why you would set up with with Lloyd Kelly left back and then McNeil left wing back. You'd think like you've got Curtis Jones on the bench who's been starting for Liverpool. Like it, it, it seems like the obvious option to me that he he's a nailed on starter. And then I feel like he left it left it a bit late. I feel like the, the system was never going to work going into the second half. I think maybe half time changes because I mean, England are in trouble. If, if they lose tonight to a, a strong Portugal team, then they are in trouble again, and that will be another embarrassing defeat. And I think Buford himself might get the sack. I don't know. I know his contract's up in the summer, but I feel like it's just unacceptable if they go out. The team's too good. The team's playing week in, week out in the Premier League or the Championship, and they can't be losing to, to Switzerland. Completely agree, James. You know, it's, it's one of them situations where... They're, they're under pressure now. Uh, the players didn't perform the other night. I think, uh, as I said, Boothroyd, in my opinion, is certainly um, his, his job's in danger, uh, especially if they end up going out in the group stage. The under-21 Euros this year seems a bit rushed anyway. You know, you've got yeah. the group stage now, then the knockouts in, in the summer prior to, to the to the proper Euros. Um, but, you know, it's, it's it seems rushed and maybe the players aren't feeling it. I, I don't know. Um, but it, it just it's, it was a very bizarre performance from me and, and I'm hoping to see a lot better tonight uh, against Portugal. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, we have players like Ryan Sessegnon who are playing, you know, fairly regularly. He was perfectly suited to that left wing back role. And yet we're seeing Dwight McNeil, who was a brilliant crosser of the ball. But when you're playing inside forwards, you don't necessarily need a crosser. You know, we've got that in Smith Rowe, who's technically superb. And so it's just, it's frustrating because we've got the likes of Eze, Madueke, Brewster, Sessignon, who have been playing fairly regularly and would perfectly suit the way we're lining up, where you, you have those sort of wing backs, full backs, whatever you want to call them, with cover behind them, as well as inside forwards who will suck inside. So something needs to change because Portugal are a very, very, very good side at all levels and they have a brilliant crop of young players coming through and if we can't if we don't get the result there we're out pretty much you know I can't there's no way for us to go through but if we played anything like we did against Switzerland there's no way we're going to beat Portugal Do you, do you think he'll switch it up tonight Elliot or, or do you think we'll see the 3-4-3 three, three from him again? Well anyone that has a brain would say stick with a 4-3-3 three, three or a 4 2 three, one, something a bit more attacking mm -hmm. I can't, I can't, if he starts the 3-4-3, three, three, I just, I can't back him anymore because it clearly didn't work. 
Um, I think Curtis Jones has to start tonight. I mean, you're looking at Portugal, they're one of the top top nations within the uh, Euros, and you need a player that's been playing in the Champions League and in the Premier League week in, week out. Uh, James, who, who's your favourite for, for the competition then? I'll, I'll go first. For, for me, it, it's France. <laughs> Yeah, France are insanely talented, aren't they? They've got such a brilliant generation of players. But at the same time, I think Spain are in with a decent show. I know they struggled to get the result against Italy last night, or at the time of recording, it was last night where they were nil nil. But they have a very, very good crop of players, recognisable players too, like Mingueza, who's been playing reg- fairly regularly for Barcelona. So it's yeah, it's hard. To, it's, I think it's a toss up between England should be one of the favourites. But if we're playing like this, there's no way. And so I think it's got to be between France and Spain. That was the thing. I, I think, you know, as English people, with, with the crop of talent we've got at the moment, it was quite exciting prior to this tournament. You know, I, I felt as though England could go quite far. You know, you look at France, Portugal, Spain as, as teams that are going to be threats, Elliot. But England squad sh- should be competing f- for this competition, for, you know, the, the trophy. Uh, and-, and to lose like they did to Switzerland and be in a situation where they have to beat a strong Portugal side tonight, it's it's not it's not a good situation to be in. But who- who's your favourite, Elliot? France as well? I'm going. I'm probably going to back France, yeah, just because the, the sheer quality they have in midfield and at centre back. I think we probably do have a better attacking force in them. Um, I think that that's the worrying part for England. Our attack is 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 insane. I mean, if Greenwood didn't drop out, we're having players that are starting for Chelsea, Man United, and we can't put a goal past Switzerland. Or no, like no disrespect to them, but we should be comfortably winning that game. So uh, I'm going to have to go with France, yeah. 